12 folks, 12 people. It looks like AEW Dynamite looks like it turned out to be a terrible, terrible show. Once again, lazy and lacks luster in Colorado. And my Tuesday Night Titan review. Because it celebrated its one its um 40th anniversary last last Wednesday last um Wednesday, Tuesday Night Titans, hosted by Vince McMahon and um Lord Alfred Hayes. It was like a it was a wrestling um talk show, late night um like similar to uh David Letterman and Jay Leno. I'm gonna give you that and um and uh I'm gonna talk about um let's say it's forbidden door. Um, looking terrible. We'll just, we'll just, uh, um, so much you gotta say. Um, but before I, um, start my review, review tonight, I'm gonna open up some with a little something for all of you tonight. I'm gonna open up the show with the song I Can Dream About You by the late David Hartman, Dan, Dan Hartman, from the movie, from the 1984 film cult classic Streets of Fire starring uh Michael Pierre Pierre and uh Diane Lane. It's from the director of uh Forty Eight Hours starring Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte. So let me find the song. Yeah, the late Dan Hartman. Oh, oh, little, oh little, that, little, that was a little commercial ad from YouTube. So. Here it is. I Can Dream About You, sung by the late Dan Hartman from the 1984 film. Streets of Fire, 1984 cult classic, Streets of Fire, starring, Diane, starring Michael Pierre and Diane Lane. It was a plot, but it was a cult classic. Here it is, I Can Dream About You by Dan, the late Dan Hartman. Celebrated his 40th anniversary, song so the movie El Celebrated his 40th anniversary last Saturday, released on June, released on June, I believe, let's uh, see, June, hold on a second. June 1st, 1984, so here it is. Streets, um, I Can Dream About You by, by Dan Hartman from the movie Streets of Fire, 1984. Man, Dan Hartman. Yes, sir, he died, he died of AIDS, you know. A really good musician. He wrote a lot of songs. He's a really good singer, you know. He'll be missed dearly. One of the best blue eyed soul singers of all time. Really good singer. Yeah. Wrote so many songs over the years. He died of AIDS 30 years ago, 1994. The beat sounds really good. He's on the R&B scene of 1984 in the song. Go, 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 go. 
man. Terrible show tonight, isn't it? I can dream about you If I can't hold you tonight I can dream about you I can dream about you. Now, it's all about you tonight, Titan Flash, man. Man, who's the next Titan? I can dream about you. If I can hold you tonight. Hold you tonight. Dream about you. I can dream about you, baby. Baby, you can dream about me. Terrible. Tony Khan, what is Tony Khan going to do about this? What is Tony Khan going to do? I can dream about... I can dream about a. I cannot dream about AW or WWE, man. These days. It's sad, man. That you died at AIDS. Man, how you died at the time? I can dream about you. Very tragic casting. Dream about you. I can dream about you. You can always dream about Dan Hartman. What Grizz contribution was the guy that age, man. He wrote a lot of good songs. He wrote so many good songs for Miss Dearly. If I can't hold you tonight. Streets of Fire is a really good movie. Rick Moranis was in it, Robert Townsend was in it, Stoney Jackson was in it, and Amy Madden was in that movie. Really good movie. Can't hold you tonight. I can dream about you. If I can hold you, baby, tonight, I can dream about you. Yeah, I can dream about you. And welcome, everyone, to my little AW Dynamite Rant Review Show. I'm the Godfather Soldier, just Louis Lemons, late Chad Henshaw. So you say I used to like to dance like Chubby Checker, sing like Lionel Richie. Dance like James Brown, um, sing like Lionel Richie, uh, James, dance like James Brown, and or some some chubby chubby something like that. And I also also like to go in that hot tub, gonna make me sweat, gonna make me dry, gonna make me wet.
Welcome to my AEW Rant Review Show. Name of my topic tonight is called Blazing Lackluster in Colorado. And um, my review about Tuesday Night Titans is because it celebrates um, um, a wrestling um, variety talk show, um, which is um, almost uh, similar to uh, like David Letterman and Jay Leno. The host by the Vince Man, the scum was going to be in prison for sex, tra- tra- tracking and crap, and in the late Lord Alfred Hayes, who was the voice of the show, like Don Pardo with we Saturday Night Live. And I'm almost, and um, is and about Forbidden Door, is that's going to um, gonna be. Terrible night, and I'm also gonna give you all of you, um, every all my little pop culture and history and all that stuff. Let's get down to business. Um, let's see. See, um, see, try and find for uh, AW Dynamite. Yeah, I can dream about you from that little cult classic, a song in the movie Streets of Fire. Really good song. Rest in peace to David Dane Hart from Hartman. I can dream about you. Let's see, um, see, um, okay, love, yeah, lazy and lackluster and love in Colorado, man, Blue Arena. Okay, out comes MJF. He's our scumbag. There were a lot of people talking but when NJF was gone, like the Rainmaker, for example, who can't afford a gym membership. Then there's Swerve, who couldn't take a public speaking course, or Cotton, who thinks he's the best in the world. You know who beat everyone? You know who beat everyone? Who is actually is the best in the world? Maxwell Jacob Friedman. NGF did more in five years of AEW than anyone, going from the most being the most hated man to being the most beloved. Imagine how MJF felt knowing that people tried to smear his name when he was home recovering. Revisionists who tried, uh oh, look who comes who's coming out. It's Rush. Much like these filthy Americans, MJF was, yeah, uh, this is what is, uh, wait. Hold on a second. Sorry, skip the scene. Messed up. I messed up on something, folks. So hold on a second.
All right, let's start. I'm gonna start this over again. It is Wednesday. All right, I'm starting. Um, yeah, get this. This is from recipe.com. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What was that? Okay, the show kicks off. Let me start again. Okay, the show kicks off with MJF's music as the former AEW world champion makes his way down the ramp to a big pop from the crowd. Max enters the ring, calling for his music to be cut. As the crowd cheer him, chanting, "He's our scumbag." MJF talks about being in Colorado, which is which gets the crowd going as he talks about being back having new merch out. He talk, then talks about having. Uh, being home, sitting and watching what's going down before going into wrestling at Forbidden Door. When they head when they head to Long Island, New York, he goes back to his point, talking about the changes to the elite, the elite before running down Okada and the current world champion Swerve Strickland. NGF says he was offended by Strickland calling himself a business mogul. He didn't go to business business school or miss courses in speaking public speaking pu in, in public speaking to mjf however the most offensive thing he, he saw was wills osprey calling himself the best in the world mjf runs down a list of men osprey didn't beat reminding everyone that max beats each and reaching every one of them before saying he is the best in the world max goes away Goes on to say he became the face of AEW with the best matches and interviews in the company, and going from being the most hated man in the company, the most beloved, most beloved. He listened back home as the people tried to smear his name, but he is interrupted by the music of Rush. As El Toro Blanc, Bianco on, onto the stage, he's calling for his music to be cut. He says MJF is never much like these fans. He is never, he, he never shuts up. While MJF was injured, Rush has been working hard and winning. MJF comes back to, to a celebration, but where is Rush's celebration? Rush feels he deserves that spotlight. So when he, when he's going to take it, because when he, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. MJF runs him down, saying he didn't catch El Toro. Blanco, Blanco just said running down the elite for making things worse around here. He asked, he asked Rush to run that back before cutting him off. Back off. MJF addresses the bounty he offered to take for taking out Brian Danielson, recognizing the international superstar Rush is. Rush is as he has beaten the best, some of the best in the business. Here's the problem: MJF isn't one of the best. He is the best. MJF offers some words to Rush before disrespecting him in Spanish, before cutting him, before cutting his catchphrase. Only Rush to make make a beeline to, for the ring. The two officials immediately going at it. His officials and security run to break things up. Rush breaks away to get some more shots in on MJF before security finally pulls him out of the ring and up the ramp. Get this from RustyV.com. Generally entertaining segment to kick things off tonight. I wasn't sure where we were going with MJF's nod to Triple H's school of long in-ring promos, but things got really interesting with the conversation between Max and Rush. Now we see a little belly package of the rise of Roger Strong, the man challenging for the AEW World Championship tonight's main event. We cut back to ringside where Orange Cassidy makes his way to way to the ring for our opening contest. It's such a loud pout. It originally drowns the announcement of the match itself to be clarified uh, a four-way match with the winner facing Will Ospreay next week for the AEW International Championship. Out next is Kyle O'Reilly, followed by Jay Lethal and Ray Phoenix before get this opening before this opening gets gets underway. Now, yep, it's time for the match. Four-way match. Winner faces Osprey next week for the AW Championship. 
AW International Championship, Orange, Cassidy versus Kyle O O O O'Reilly, Auto Parts versus Jay Lethal versus Ray Phoenix. After a flurry, Phoenix gets sent out of the ring by Lethal, catches him, catches O'Reilly with the end security that sends him out as well. This leaves Lethal hitting by hitting a strut on to be on to be dropped by the mat by Cassidy who sends him the ropes. Kyle attacks Jay on the apron before going back into the ring, locking up with Cassidy who gets his hands on his pockets to break a hole. Orange catches some catches some McMahon off the ropes for a drop kick, forcing Kyle out of the ring, but Cassidy gets caught by Phoenix in the corner. Immediately after immediately after. Phoenix takes a flurry of offense, sending Orange out, but is blindsided by Lethal in the process. Jay goes for a lethal injection, but is caught by, by a wrist lock by from O'Reilly, who gets rocked by Phoenix before all three go at it until Cassidy gets back into it, taking the rest of the competitors out as we go to picture in picture. The action focuses on lethal sending the two of the other men out before going after Cassidy in the corner, setting up for a suplex that drops him hard up to the mat, but only gets a near fall. He goes back on the attack with a kick to Super Gut, but Cassidy blocks the suplex attempt as we come back from a break. Cassidy continues to evade the superplex before dropping Lethal with a stunt dog review. But Kyle rushes it with it with a cross arm arm breaker on Cassidy and he gets orange to his shoulder for a pin attempt. But Phoenix takes a splash on t- splash to break it up. Phoenix and O'Reilly get sent. The outside as Lethal goes for a forward figure four leg, figure four leg lock on Cassidy, clinching it tight, in tight. Phoenix goes for a stomp on Lethal, who evades a, as Kyle gets a sleeper hold on Phoenix instead. Lethal hold, Lethal breaks his hold to stop on O'Reilly getting a submission, and this ends with a with Lethal getting caught with a cross arm break by Kyle for his trouble. Cassidy and Phoenix break the other hole before attacking each other, which gives Lethal, which gives Lethal an opening, an opening to top drop for Phoenix, drop for Phoenix, rolling out of the ring. Phoenix gets caught with it, with the head scissors by Cassidy, who hits orange, who hits an orange punch on O'Reilly, only to be rocked with a. Uh, Lethal combination by J. Lethal injection connects on Cassidy, but he's quickly caught by surprise by Phoenix, who cradles Lethal for the pin and win. Winner by pinfall, Ray Phoenix. I get this. Uh, but well, I, I disagree earlier about um, what um, recipe.com said earlier about um. But um, the opening, but the opening, but the opening show was interesting. It was just kind of corny, and shitty. But here's what he said about on um, this match. Wrestleview.com fun match to kick off the in-ring fun action here. The three former international champions and a former Ring of Honor champion and lethal squaring off with some great stuff. Stuff throughout big win for Phoenix. Tessa so what will be an exciting bout for next week against Osprey. Just as the match ends, we see Don Callis and Trent Brother handing down the ramp as, and go to go after Orange Cassidy, only for Chris Setland to be seemingly intervening until she drops Cassidy with the right hand. Orange does all he can, can to keep his composure as Willow's Nightingale's music hits, sending her on sending her on her beeline for a former friend, but Setland escapes leaving the ring with Stuckley Hathaway as they head up the ramp. Early today, Chris Jericho makes his way to the arena, offering driving advice to the man who dropped him and his students before giving them to the cameraman. We cut backstage where Renee talks to Will Nightingale, who addresses Losing to Mercedes Monet, aka Sasha Banks, before 
turning her attention to Stokely Hathaway and Chris Statlander. She says, after stabbing her in the back, you know how dangerous Willow's smile can be. Orange pops up and to give a fist bump to Nightingale for the save earlier. But, but before we cut back to ringside, ringside before, before we cut back to ringside, back at ringside, Christopher Daniel steps out of the ring to talk about the, the AEW TNT Championship ladder match. Qualifying matches were announced last week. We will have another qualifying match right here, right now. Our first mark, first is Mark Briscoe to a big pop followed by Brian Cage before this match gets underway. Now it's time for the AEW TNT Championship qualifying match. Mark Briscoe versus Brian Cage. Cage lays on into the Ring of Honor World Championship er, champion early on, sending him into the corner for some hard strikes before Briscoe manages to fight back. Sending Cage out of the ring in the process, Briscoe grabs a chair. Hold on. Sorry, wait, hold on. Talk and go get your phone and hold on. See where I was. I forget where I was. Let me start where I, where, where, um. Let me start um go back to where I was to say okay. Our first match is Bris Mark Briscoe to a big pop followed by Ryan Cage before this match gets underway. Cage lay falls up by bringing Briscoe back into the ring, launching him over to the top rope before posing for the crowds to go to picture in picture. Cage maintains control throughout laying Briscoe Briscoe laying into Briscoe into in a set showcase before showcase in the of his power before getting a near fall. Cage then transitions to a headlock that keeps Briscoe grounded up to the mat, but Briscoe starts fighting back as we come back from the, from break. Briscoe makes it click to his feet for some forearms to Cage, hitting the ropes for momentum to hit another one, and following some chops. Cage gets sent to the, the ropes before Briscoe hits an elbow strike on the machine, picking up a near fall in the process. Cage gets sent to a corner now before Briscoe sends him out of the ring with a big kick. Briscoe lives, leaves the ring once again, leaves the ring, once again bringing chairs to the ring. The ref takes up, takes one of them out, but the other is set up, allowing Briscoe to hit the top, top dive over the top rope onto Cage. Briscoe sends him Back into the ring before hitting a froggy boat, but Cage kicks out. Briscoe goes for another driller, but Cage turns it around for a pump handle slam. For a near fall, he follows up with a Liger Bomb, but Briscoe kicks out of this as well. As the match goes on, we see Don Callis and Kano Suzuki Chida watching from the stands, and it's Jack Perry watching from the back from backstage. Briscoe Back on his feet for an uppercut, but Cage catches him with a thrust kick. Briscoe fights back, hitting a Death Valley driver on the machine before again going up for a rock for another froggy bowl that gets him the pin and the win. Winner Mark Briscoe. And we cut backstage where Jack Jungle Jack as Perry mocks Briscoe before saying the saying the universe 
already chosen to be the new AWTNT champion. Backstage at ringside, Briscoe resumes celebrating the win tonight as he advances the ladder match at Forbidden Door. Backstage again, Renee talks to Samoa Joe and Hook and a former world champion about offering to be a mentor before the premier athletes interrupt to run Hook down. Joe keeps him from going off on Nisa and Guevara saying losers like them don't talk to winners unless they think they can get away with it. We come backstage once more following up I'm going to go to a commercial break with cuts. Backstage once more following the learning tree as he catches up. Catches up to his old JAS pals, Matt Menard and Wolfhan Ang. And he gives Menard some advice on commentary. He gives Ang some, parenting, some tips on parenting before walking off. Backstage at the ring, the acclaimed started a rap about being about the young bucks before the EVPs cut them off, telling them the segment has, has been cut off since they disparaged Nicholas and Matthew. The crowd chants what they think of this, but the acclaimed's mics are cut off so they cannot respond if they head up the ramp instead. We cut backstage where Renee talks to Swear Strickland, who addresses the MJF, addresses MJF before saying, the contract for the AEW World Championship match will be sent to Will Ospreay. He then talks to the Young Bucks and how the team, how Team AEW shouldn't forget to wear World Championship champion next time. Then we see a little video package. We see a little video package, um, package hype from Mercedes Monet and Stephanie the care the head of their title title for the their title for the title match of Forbidden Door 2024. Back at ringside, Blackpool Comeback Club makes their way through the through the crowd. We give a big ovation for all four men, including the returning Wheeler Yuta, head of our next match. Our next our CM Double L stars Volador. Balador Jr., Magnus, Rugido, and Esfinge. Esfinge. Esfinge hand to the, to the ring before this eight man tag match gets underway. Yep, the um, Bullet, um, the BCC, and the AWW. IWGP World Heavyweight Champion John Maxley, aka John Maxley, aka Dean Ambrose, WWE versus CNWLs, Bolidar Jr., Magnus, Rugido, and Esfinge. We start off with absolute chaos as all eight men go at it. The action quickly spilling to the outside as BCC start to get the upper hand over the luchadors. Things finally calm down as Danielson and Rodrigo enter the ring to trade blows. With Danielson sending the luchador to the ropes, but Rodrigo hits a drop kick, sending him out of the ring. Chaos ensues again as the BCC rush into the ring now, but the CM double O stars get the upper hand this time. Rodrigo get um Rodrigo catches Danielson with a tiger fin kick for a near fall. Where the tags are made to Yuta and Magnus. Yuta takes Magnus. Yuta takes Magnus down for a, sh a shoulder tackle, but is caught with us. Pacers by the luchador in response, only to be sent to the corner by a corner for a BCC team. Beat down. All four more take Magnus down hard to the canvas, reeling the pick crowd up before we go to picture in picture. BCC control keeping Magnus isolated in the corner as Claudio tags in, in for more more damage only to tag Danielson back in and continue the beatdown. Tag now to Mox now, who drives Magnus into the ropes with his boot before we 
returns from break. Mox brings Luch the Luchador back into the middle of the ring, going after the shoulder where Magnus fights back. The insecure and tag to Esfinge. Claudio tags in as well, but is sent out, going to the ring as the rest of BCC go after him. He catches each each with a crack baker before turning to Casanova, tying him up for an impressive win attempt that Cas Claudio manages to kick out of. Rigido, Rigido, Rigido comes in, hitting Mox with a German suplex, followed by one to you before Magnus comes in for a running knee. A second attempt a second attempt gets countered into a giant swing by Claudio where Vladador comes in this time but Danielson catches him with a kick to the chest. Rigido finally gets in, gets a tag back in clearing things out before going in for a German su suplex on Udo. Chaos breaks out once more in the ring for Vladar gets a head scissors on Danielson, only to be caught by a, a seatbelt clutch by Yuta for uh, the pin and the win. The winner is the BCC. BCC celebrates with cut backstage where Jericho offers a hand, a stage hand, some hiding tips, and catering on how to properly fill one's plate. Then we see a video package. Daniel Garcia talks about how the risk he needs to take for himself, which includes the challenge laid out to Will Ospreay for the AW International Championship. The cut backstage where the, the claim confront the Young Bucks for cutting them off earlier tonight. Some harsh words are exchanged before the claim walk off. We cut backstage to the EVPs where Matthew and Nicholas. Matthew and Nicholas are confronted by Christian Cage or the Patriot in the, in the Patriot Theatric Patriot I'm pronouncing Patriot Patriarchy. Wait, Patriarchy. That's how I, got, I think I got it. Cage is is pissed off about what went down at Double or Nothing 2024. And as the young bucks young it, and the and that's the young bucks for another shot at the title. Matthew says that after last week they realized they can't just hand titles or title shots title shots. They are willing to help Cage out as best as they can. Cage is asked what his shoe size is before the Patriot Patriarch should leave the office. Back at ringside, Tony Storm makes her way to the Way out to accompany Mariah May to ring for sailing out commentary. Our next is Soraya in this and this marquee match two weeks in the two weeks in the making gets underway. Soraya aka Mariah May, Mariah May versus Soraya aka Paige from WWE. Soraya blindsides May in the corner, but Mariah manages to take the fight back. To her as she drops the former women's world championship to Navis. Soraya slides out of the ring with May giving chase before Soraya finally makes it back to in the ring. Mariah is forced to chase after Soraya once again. The pilot blindsides her with a clothesline as we go to picture in picture. Soraya maintains control as she goes back to the outside to continue the attack on May. She sets up Mariah on the apron for a kick that sends her back into the ring, and Soraya follows closely before driving her boot into the throat of Mariah. Back in the middle of the ring, now Soraya drops May before we come back from the break. The two fight their knees with an exchange of strikes. May sends Soraya to the corner before setting her up on a turnbuckle and for a running hit, head handstand, her right front that sends her to the top, that sends her into the mat. Mariah climbs up to climbs up top up for a missile drop kick and cover before Soraya kicks out. May sends her to, sends her to the corner once again, sending her up for a running hip attack for covering. Try 
once again. Once again, Soraya manages to kick out. Both women back to their feet as now as they trade strikes, power each other before Soraya hits Rampage for a cover, cover of her own, only for May to kick, kick out this time. The two get go back at it until Mariah McGregor's Soraya for a near fall who fights back with a thrust kick before locking into a PTO forcing May to submit. Winning by submission, Soraya. Tony rushes to go after Soraya, but means Sakara go hit on um, his down the ramp. His down the ramp to confront the AEW Women's World Champion after the challenge was made to made a recent stardom show. Mariah for our parts tries to uh, comfort both ladies as we go ladies as we, ladies as we get a graphic confirming the match between Mina and Tony at Forbidden Door 2024. Backstage, Jericho gives private parties some advice about op about opening up their party to everyone. Big Bill said those who be advice the most don't take take it before Jericho fights them TV time with their learning tree next week. The group walks off leaving private party to mock Jericho as we go to a commercial. Backstage, we hear from Brian Gen Danielson, who gives kudos to Wheeler Yuta for his performance tonight during the eight-man tag match. He then addresses his final year as a full-time competition, and how it hasn't gone his way after losing some big matches. The straw that broke the camel's back was loot was back was losing Arnicky in the arena. And talking to Wheeler Yuta that and reminded him that. His final year is not over a year. Danielson talks about the winner of the Art Cup entering a, a shot at the AW World Championship at All In, indicating that he intends to end his final year off on the top before walking off. Back at ringside, Roger Strong makes his way to the ring for our main event. Out next is Stuart Strickland. And after we go get ring introductions for both men, this match gets underway for the AEW World Championship. Roger circles the cannabis looking for an opening scene before the two men lock up. With Strong getting a waist lock that Swerge counters out of, Strong goes right back at it with Strickland sent Strickland. Right, but Strickland sends him to the top ropes for some break. Side headlocks it by the champ to take. Champ takes Roddy to the mat. A strong fights back to his feet before sending Strickland to the ropes. Only for the champ to take him down with a shoulder tackle. Strong quickly gets the upper hand with a with the front headlock now. But the champ but the champ just as soon as he gets to his feet before sending Strong to the ropes. And it's a suplex on Strong only for Harder Roger to counter out for a second one. Shredder hits a hits a kick on the challenger who rolls who rolls out of the ring to, to evade a house call. Roddy makes it back to, back into the ring as he goes after Strickland, but the champ evades evades a kick to turn thing around him around in his favor. Despite the strong fights back with a chop before Shredder sends him into a turnbuckle. Strickland goes up, up to a swear, to a oh for a swear stomp, but is distracted by a table before Strong sends him down. and falls up a massive bright breaker onto the turnbuckle itself, forcing the champ out of the ring. Strickland back on his feet as Strong goes for a drop kick, only to be pulled through the ropes by a champ who drops Roger down hard onto the floor, causing some major damage to the challenger. We go to picture in picture. Swerve gets gets on the apron, but he gets cut off by Strong, who takes control of the match, bringing the champ back into the ring to wear him down. Stronger follows up up with a series of rat breakers before we before locking in and Donald stress as we come back. 
Strickland tries to tries his back to fight out of the hole, finally getting back up to his feet before a strong starts wearing him back down again until the champ counters taking right down hard to Canavas. Swerve in the corner for a diving uppercut on a challenger. Followed by Followed by sending him onto the top rope and hitting a flat liner. Brain buster by the champ as he goes for the cover, but Strong manages to kick out. Swerve, swerve back to his feet as he goes for a big, big pressure, but a distraction from the kingdom opens him up for an attack by back for an attack by the challenger. Strickland catches him with a power slam for a near fall instead. Swerve heads to a the corner looking for a house called a strong invades, leaving the ring to the, to the safety of his friends on the outside. Swerve goes for a dive but is caught by the kingdom, which leaves Strong dropping on the apron. Strong go, takes the champ back, however, Strong takes the champ back into the, the ring for the cover, but Swerve manages to nearly kick out Riding back to his feet as a crowd boo. But the challenger is poised to lay into Strickland for some forearm strikes before the champ fights back on to be caught by with a double knee face buster by Strong. Roger catches him with a, with a couple of suplexes for a near fall, followed by a, a big six kick, six kick that yields the same result. Swerve rolls to the apron as Strong follows closely, setting the champ up on the apron before Strickland fights back. Sweep followed by a thrust kick. And it all builds to a dive sending challenger to the floor. Strong is sent back to the ring as Swerve looks for a house call. Roddy evades, but Strickland catches him for with a house call on the rebound for the pin and the win to retain. Winner and still AEW World Champion Stur Strickland. We're celebrating the ring as we get a rundown of what's to come this week, as well as the upcoming pay per view, as the as the upcoming Forbidden 2024 pay per view. And Strickland leaves to, to celebrate with the front row of fans as the show comes to a close. This was terrible tonight. That's why it's, I call it lazy and lackluster tonight in Loveland, Colorado. Very terrible. Very terrible tonight. Weak ass show. Now you know what it's now um that's all that's it um that's my little review for tonight's AW. Now you know what it's time for. I'll tell you what it's time for all of you are watching this video. It's time for I'll tell you what I'll be, I'll tell you, yeah, you know what, I'll know what's time for, hold on a second. It's time for something I like to do. It's time for Justin's time capsule history. And I know I'll give you all everything, sports, pro wrestling history. Maybe a little pop culture, etc., etc. Let's go down to business, shall we? Now, all of you hear that that was a theme, um, uh, Back to the Future, starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Very good movie. I love that movie. Now, let's start off with uh, 
something. Uh, now, all of you know that last Wednesday was the 40th anniversary of the wrestling um, talk, um variety talk show, Tuesday Night Titans, hosted by um Vince, former wrestling promoter Vincent Mann, who's now in deep shit right now with his sex scandal, and um and loud Laura Alfred Hayes, who was the speak voice speaker like Don Pardo of Saturday Night Live and stuff like that. I mean, the show was like reminiscent to Jay Leno. I mean to uh David late um late night with David Letterman and Jay Leno and stuff like that. And um Tuesday Night Titans debuted it. It celebrated its 40th anniversary, debuted it, celebrated its 40th anniversary last Wednesday. Debuted on Tuesday, May 29th, 1984 on the USA Network. I'm gonna give you all. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, show name of the topic. Of the show was called "Cooking with the Samoan Samoans Kitchen," and uh, it was a special look. It was um, it was a special look um, with uh, in the life of Dr. David Schultz, Dr. D. David Schultz, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, and B. Bryant, and um, take um, yeah, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff taking on B. Bryant Barry and Cino Tillis and Thomas Bells. Adorable Adrian Adonis and classic action between Arnold Scolin and Joe Turco. And uh Yeah, it was a show that started it all. Yeah, um Joe Turco and, and, and some cooking lessons with the wild Samoans off in Sika. Yo, um, the hosts were Vince McMahon, Lord Alfred Hayes, welcome, welcome a who's who of 1980s WWE superstars, including the Macho Man, Randy Savage, Ryan Piper, Jake Snake, Rabbits, and more to WWE's original talk show. I mean, it was on the USA Network. Some live would remember the little light, late night. Like late night talk show, like to all late night talk shows by the time, like like late night with David Letterman. And this man was more like David Letterman in this one, in this show. Um, well, let's go to uh some wrestling birthdays, some wrestling birthdays from yesterday. Uh. See. Okay, um birthdays yesterday. Yesterday would have been a happy scene. Yesterday would have been a happy Yesterday was a happy 87th birthday to the WWE Hall of Famer Gorilla Monsoon. His real name is uh, Robert J. Morella. And his son, his son, um, and most fans fans call him Gino. He died of diabetes, very sad death. And his son, he's now there his son Joey Morella. He's known for a catchphrase. He says to Bobby Heenan, "Will you stop?" Man, I miss Gorilla Monsoon. I miss him. And yesterday was a happy. Yeah, 
was a happy 69th birthday to yesterday was a happy 69th birthday to Joe Malenko, the brother, the older brother of uh, Dean Malenko. And yesterday was a happy 20. Let's see. Happy 27th birthday to Rio from AEW. And let's see some uh some uh, wrestling history, some uh yesterday's wrestling history. Um see 1994. Let's see. Let's go back to night um yesterday, June the fourth, nineteen ninety-four. Uh Let's see. You see a little um, Hulk Hogan interview uh, on WCW Pro. Um, we see a little Hulk Hogan interview. Um, Hulk Hogan interview. Stars and Stripes, Buff Bagwell and the Patriot face off against Pat Rose and Buddy Lane. Jungle Jim, Jim Steele versus Mike Ford, Cactus Jack, and Kevin Sullivan versus Bob Cook and the Gambler. WCW Flashback, Barry Windham and versus Nature Boy Ric Flair for Bash and Beach 93. Funkhouse first versus Dustin Rose. I have no idea who won. Now uh, WCW. Now let's go. Uh, let's go to another same day. W that that same day. Um, to uh, WWE Superstars, June the fourth, nineteen ninety four. Hosts were Vincent Mann, Jerry King Lawler. We start off a clip from last week where Clay accidentally spewed spewed mist under Adam Bomb's face, costing him a shot at entering the King of the Ring tournament. This sets up Adam Bomb versus Clay match. Yeah, Adam Ball called said said he caught yeah, Adam Ball went on the Hardy Woman said, I could have won it all, you stupid idiot. Where is Quang? Yeah, he was really pissed. Then we see a little match. Um Mabel versus with Oscar versus Iron Mike Sharp. Uh Mabel clowns Lawler on his way to the rings to Sharp bounces off Mabel with a few times as Vince talks about Mabel possibly becoming the king of the ring. Mabel drops Sharp. And stays in control until he catches Sharp with an arrange for the win. Lawler once again hints that Roddy Piper will be his guest on King's Court this Monday night on Raw. Then we see a little WWF live event news segment on the WrestleMania Revenge Tour. We see a fan win a contest to bear to the flag for Lex Luger to in a brief keep with a Howard Finkel versus Harry Whipple in the Teal match. They also plug a marathon tour which features a 60 minutes marathon matches between. Brett and Owen Hart. Then we see the match. Nikolai Volkov with Ted DiBiase versus Derek Domino. Now, I can't believe um, Nikolai Volkov was really stupid to let um, Ted DiBiase manipulate him to get um, manipulate him to get what he wants. Because he's all about his. I mean. It's e he's an egomaniac, Ted DBS, the million dollar man, all, he got, all the money, and all he cares about, all the money he makes. Everybody has a price, like he always said. Ha 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 ha. Whatever. Volkov hits a, hits a few suplexes as Dave DBS is pissed over Volkov breaking, clean, breaking cleanly. Ben screams about Volkov having to work for a boss he hates and, uh, and a boss that constantly reminds him he's better to do having more money. Volkov. Gets more aggressive as the announcers talk about how uh, about these about trying to acquire the Undertaker. Domino hammers away in in the corner and and D then D B S box box orders at Volkov. Domino attacks from behind, but Volkov 
beats him down and hits a slam before using a Boston Crab foot for, for the win. DiBiase is still not happy despite this win, but Vince said The Undertaker would make him happy. DiBiase leaves as Volkov hurries to catch up. We hear from Paul Berry, who says DiBiase is lying about making contact with The Undertaker. In fact, not, e not even he has been seeing him until the trail The Undertaker has cold run cold. Then we see the match um, Queen versus Adam Bond. Whippleman is nowhere to be seen. Queen tries to attack Bond before the bell, but Bond, the Bond fights back. They go back and forth as the action is decent, but the crowd doesn't care one bit. The action now, now spills outside as Whippleman now comes comes down the aisle. Queen chokes out Bond in the corner as the action returns to ring. Bomb fights back and they trade punches until Quang rakes the eyes. Quang duck ducks his head for a backdrop and gets kicked in the face. Wolverman seems upset as we go to another slugfest ending with Bomb punching Quang over the top rope. Wolverman tries to hold Quang back then and backs him up the aisle as he gets count out. Bob Goat heads up to the aisle as we go to a break. Then we see a match. Um, versus um, uh, the Native American Tatanka versus Reno Riggins. They had to talk about um, now to talk, half of the Tatanka versus Crush Lumber Project match on Raw. And um, Vince apologizes for Riggins' comments. And um, Tatanka gets the win against Reno Riggins. The King of Ring report was up next um, between Todd Pengill. Special Ring and Astro. Um, and it's time for the match between Phil Paul versus Rocket Owen Hart. Owen Hart wins the match. And what is Spickable like? Um, um, people are talking about how Owen, uh, and Owen says he might be the one, um, we, we, we be King the Ring, trying to um, do what his brother did, but Owen Brett did in 93. Now we see a little footage from King's Court with Diesel, Shawn Michaels, and Lawler attacking Bret Hart. Now we hear from Diesel and Sean to tell Brett we just got a preview of King of the Ring 94. Sean says he will be in Diesel's corner to make sure everything goes according to their plan. Brett is then shown he will have a family member in his corner to neutralize Sean. He tells Brett they will face each other one on one. Now we wait until we see who accompanies Brett to the ring. I know who that person is, that family member. The British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, I think I'm right. And then we'll see the next match, the Quebecers for Giant Paul versus Tony Storm and Tom McNeely. And uh, the match, and we, uh, winners are the Quebecers. We're not the Mounties. Na, 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 na. We're not the Mounties. We're brave enough. We're strong. We can run and hide. We can try and We're the Mounties. We always get our man. Then is the sh then the show ends. Then we see a, um now on that same day um on June fourth, nineteen ninety four, Saturday, on Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Let's see um on Smoky Mountain Wrestling. On June 4th, 1994. Ricky Morton, you see the, um, uh, the Rock and Roll Express, I believe, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson defeating Killer Kyle and James Atkins. Well done, defeated Brian Logan and Anthony Michaels. When uh, Stephen and Whit Michaels, um, Kendall and Samuri pin Chris Hammerlock, match was determined to vacant Smoky Mountain beat the champ TV champion. Smoky Mountain. Wrestling Tag Team Champions Ryan Lee and Chris Candido. Ryan Lee, we know, is the fake Undertaker. And Chris Candido and Guy Russell Soul defeated Mike Furness and Bobby Blaze at 3.46 when Blaze pinned Candido. Then on, w, then on uh, WCW Saturday night.
Yeah, Bobby Heenan was complaining about um not so that Hulk Hogan has joined joined WCW. Yeah, and um he had to run out and leave. Yeah, run out and leave, and Ric Flair was very furious about Hulk Hogan coming. And um, yeah, and Sensational King Sherry came out and she said she, she's gonna be she's gonna be at the Clash of Champions on June the twenty third, June twenty third, and, and talk about how um she has a big surprise. See um, and there's some some matches on in the mat in the matches on on that day uh. Oh, yeah, Clash of Champions. Eric, Eric he talks you. Uh, um, Clash of Champions ninety um twenty seven will be air on and, and on June twenty third. It was announced and um. Okay, okay, now it's 12 a.m. in the morning. Now it's um, June 6, 2024, right now. See, um, okay, Rick matches Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat defeat Ron Oates, um, the Nasty Boys defeat Larry Santo, Mike Winter. Um, looks like the um Cactus Jack and Kevin Stone break gonna be breaking up. Um, and WCW United States Champion Stunning Steve Austin, we know it's Stone Cold Steve Austin, current Ron Rob Parker in Maine, you know it's Haku defeat Marcus Alexander Beckwell. And uh see. And all of you are gonna be a real shocked for this. 2004, June 64, 2004, like the tenth anniversary, the twentieth anniversary of the show that started it all, Impact Wrestling, and here on Fox Sports Net. Yep, Fox Sports Net is where it all started. The birth of Impact Wrestling. Yep, June 4, 2004, marked the yesterday um June 4, 2024, more the 20th anniversary of Impact Wrestling. Okay, the opening promo for for um impact hits we were taking out the Stone Street 21 Universal Studios for the show. Another series of past TNA hit lights quickly shown in the small power displays goes off in the entry above the ring. The match has a time ten minute time limit and a graphic and a graphic at the bottom of the screen previews this Wednesday night's um pay per view from Nashville T N W A T N A. Match starts off with Team Canada, P. Williams, Bobby Roode, Eric Young with Scott D. Moore versus Sanjay Dutt and Amazing Red Head to Garza. The winner and the winner, um, the winners, um, the winners are Sanjay Dutt. The winners are uh, Sanjay Dutt, the Amazing Red, and Head to Garza, and they show how the King of the Mean King of the Mountain match this past Wednesday night was shown for NWA TNA. 
Jeff Jarrett wins the match and becoming a three-time MWA World Champion. NWA World Heavy Champion. He plugged this Wednesday nights. He plugged this Wednesday nights pay-per-view event from Nashville, Tennessee. Then we go to a commercial break, and we see Mike Tanay and Don West at ringside. They bring up since June of 2002, and told TNA has made an impact on pro wrestling. He plugged the heavyweight X Division in TNA. TNA pl- plugs that they will show highlights for the past two years. They show uh, Jeff Jarrett confronting Toby Keith. And Keith entering the gauntlet from the gold on the debut edition of TNA. And they were TNA hitting a big suplex on Jeff Jarrett, eliminating him from the, from the match, ne- match. Next week, Giant Fair Play um, squares off with Chicago's Bears on Brian or your lacquer. They plug the two year anniversary coming up, up this month. And a plug this week is this week is showing Jerry Lynn had the Gazer and Harry Mudd versus Team Color Shot Boy versus Sanjay Dutt versus Dave Young and D Grave 3000 in the Four Corners Gut Check match. Fans Choice match when the NWA World Heavy Tag Team Champions defended against the opponents voted on the fans of TNA. NWTNA.com. Frankie Gazarian defends NWA TNA X Division title against the winner of tonight's main event and newly crowned NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Jeff Jarrett will speak on his recent title victory. And then they show a promo to NWA TNA Wrestling, TNA Wrestling site TNA.com shown promo for the new NWA TNA DVD Best Tire Matches was shown. Then go to commercial break. The match has a talent in the match. We saw Abyss versus Shark Boy, winner of Abyss. After the match, Popeye celebrating the 75th anniversary comes out on Shark Boy ringside. Then we see the um, little go to commercial break and we see the next match Kid Callis and Gallows versus American Most Wanted. And the winner of the match is American Most Wanted. Then we see a little in ring segment with uh, free, um, Dusty Rose, Three Light Crew, and Jeff Jarrett. In the ring, Mike Tanay adventures the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty American Dream, Dusty Rhodes comes down the ring and gets a reaction from the, uh, Dusty um, Rhodes comes down, God rest his soul, Rhodes comes down to the ring and gets a great reaction, reaction from the crowd in Orlando. Rhodes says, you talk about impact. We heard all around the world today. Today is the most impact. Rose says tradition lives at TNA. Today brings up a, a, the rich history of NWT, NWA World Heavyweight Title. And Rose name, names Luthez, Buddy Rogers, and Jeff, Jack Briscoe, the truth, and others examples. Today brings up how Jared captured the NWA World Heavyweight Title match. Jeff Jarrett captured the NWA World Heavyweight Title match this past Wednesday in King of the Mountain match. R- Rose says one time he considered Jarrett a brother tradition in the old ways of, of the school. Jarrett's hit m- music hits appears at the top ramp with the NWA World Heavyweight Title in, in, in guitar in hand. J- Jarrett gets in the ring and tells Dusty look at himself. Jarrett asks Dusty why. Why you know Jarrett is a real egomaniac in here. Jarrett asks Dusty why is he is even at the show. He admired and respected Dusty when he was 15 years old. Jared said he was grateful in everything he taught him. That was 20 years ago. Jared said he doesn't get it because he was trying to help him. He says he's trying to keep him from bearing himself over and over again. Jared asks if it's about the money, he said, and he says he will give him whatever he wants. He says there's a place for guys like you in the business. He isn't standing in the end. He isn't standing to the um, next to the three-time world heavyweight champion in King of the Mountain, he says he said it means not being in the ring, his ring. Jared gets it now. He compares Dusty to John Wayne riding him into town, and he's the local villain. Jared says he will take five steps forward if he and if he is still in doubt, he will run for him out of it. Jared steps five five steps forward, turns around, and Dusty gets some hard rights on Jared. Jared deserved it. Jared fights back with some hard rights of his own, grabs the power, but Ron True Killings hits the ring. He takes out Jared with a, with a jump of clothesline. 
This is a side kick, and Jerry smashes his guitar over his head. Jerry leaves the ring quickly as BG James and Conan hit the ring. BG said James says he reminds him of Ellie Van Haren with his guitar. He is nothing. James says Wednesday pay per view he will answer the free live answer the fright free live crew. Then we see an interview with um, Vince Russo, um, Shane Douglas, and uh, then we see the number one contenders match, AJ Styles versus Michael Shane versus Elo Skipper versus Chris Haven. Winner the number one contender, new number one contender, AJ Styles is a piece of garbage right now after what he did to fooling, making a real complete fool out of American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. You know what? I know why. I think AJ Styles, about, about, um, let me say about AJ Styles. I know why he did what he did. I think he's pissed off but hurt because um, AJ, AJ Styles, you know, I, I want to know why he did what he did to Cody. He's pissed off but hurt because Cody's dad kicked his ass in TNA. Um, Way way back in the way way back in the mid two thousands, ever since the show and the company begun, he showed no respect to him. Now, I know that there's every locker room in that in in that, in that ring. I, I was, everyone in the locker room from SmackDown wanna whoop AJ Styles as we did, especially L A Knight L A Knight who was filled with him. Yeah, AJ Styles is going to pay. In June 4th, 2004, um, a couple of movies, a movie was released in theaters nationwide called Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban based on one of the books by J.K. Rowling, starring Daniel Radcliffe in the title role and uh, Emma Watson and uh, Rupert Grint and uh, Emma Thompson was in that movie and so many others. Um, late Rick, Alan Rickman was in that movie. Now let's go to yesterday, uh, June. Um, see, uh, see what else? See, we're trying to see any, any sports. Um, to find any sports. To find any sports. See and try to find some sports. Okay, yesterday, June the fifth. Okay, um, the 2014 NBA Finals, on June fifth, 2015, June um June fifth, 2014, yesterday. Um. Wait, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, hold on, wait, let me see. Okay, June the 5th, 2015, then I'm going to go to the wrestling birthdays and history. June the 5th, 2014, on the NBA Finals, 2014 NBA Finals, um, the San Antonio Spurs beat my team. Miami Heat, 110-95 at the AT&T Center in San Antonio, Texas. Seriously, 1-0. It was on, M on, the on ABC. And, um... Let's go with some wrestling birthdays. Um, for you, June, yesterday, June the 5th. 
Yesterday was a happy 20. Yesterday was a happy 27th birthday with the GGGGG Dolan. And yesterday was a happy. Happy 52nd birthday to Mike Bucci, better known as Simon Dean, he also was in ECW, Hollywood Nova, Supernova. Yeah, Gigi Dolan, yeah, Gigi Dolan was, uh, Yeah, Gigi Dolan, um, she kind of, she reminds, she kind of looks like Becky Lynch to me. Her, her, her hair on the orange hair. Yeah, Priscilla Kelly, better known as Gigi Dolan from WWE and AEW NXT. Let's see, um. Yeah, um, wrestling challenge hosted by Stan Lane and Mail and Dollar Man Ted DiBiase featured a spy, um, features a final special special report segment focusing on a feud between Roddy Piper and Jared King Lawler. Lloyd Alfred Page played a heel while and hosted the segment featured Paul Bear promo including King of the Ring report by Todd Pentgill where WWE then WWE champion Bret Hitman Hart announced he will have a family member in his corner for his match with Diesel. We all know, I bet you, I know who it is. It's the British Bulldog, David Boy Smith, God rest his soul. For his match with Diesel, including Ray Rougeau conducting an in-ring interview with um, the Rocket Owen Hart, discussing his appearance at King of the Ring. Ray, the bad guy, Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, God rest his soul, defeated P.J. Walker. And during the bout, Man Man Bulldog cut an insult promo facing Razor Ramon, the King of the Ring. Joint decline with Dink defeated Ray Ro Jobber Ray Roy with a whoopee cushion. There ain't about Jeff Jerry cutting insert promo on Doink. Heavenly Bodies with Jim Cornette defeated Virgil and Mike Bell when Del Ray pinned Bell would dive off as, as Pritchard fell on, on Bell in the air. Jeff Jarrett defeated Mike Davis via submission with the um, figure four leg lock. Figure four lock. There ain't about dirt. Joint decline cutting insert promo on Jarrett. WWE Tag Team Champions Head Strinkers with um, Alpha and Captain Lil Bow defeated uh, Mike Moraldo and Tony DeVito when Alpha pinned DeVito with a splash off the top. IRS, no, we know is um, Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt's Fire de defeated Scott Tiger, we know is Sky Too High via submission with a 245 off with penalty in the front, um, front face lock. Then we um, WCW main event. On WCW main event, June the fifth, ninety four, same day.
and we see a uh, little match um dust uh Dustin Rhodes versus Bunkhouse Bros from uh WCW Pro, Ricky Steamboat versus Bobby Brief Bobby from WCW Worldwide, the Class of Champions Power Rundown, Lord Steven Regal versus Larry Sleeping Larry um versus Larry Sabisco. World WCW TV title match from WCW Saturday night. Stunning Steve Austin versus Marcus Bagwell. US title match from uh WCW Saturday night. And Dustin Rhodes versus and Johnny B. Bad versus pretty um Johnny B. Dustin Rhodes, American the Natural Dustin Rhodes, no it's Gold Dust, Cody Rhodes' brother, older brother Johnny B. and Johnny B. Bad versus pretty wonderful Roma and Orndorff. Yeah, I believe, um, see, who won that match? I'm trying to see who won that match. I can't remember when that match, but never mind. Then we go in um, WCW Velocity. In WCW Velocity, 2000, uh, June 5th, 2004. I mean, WWE Velocity, my bad, my, my mistake. Um, June 5th, 2004, um, Reno Constantino, Rico defeated, and R Rico and Charlie Hawks defeated, Akio, Akio and Sakata retained the WWE Tag Team Championship, Billy Gunn and Parker Hall defeated, Johnny Stumbolo, Johnny Stumbolo and Nunzio, Mark Jindrock with Teddy Long defeated, Billy Kim and Spike Lowe defeated, Shannon Moore, now we go to the Thursday Night Wars, 2014, between TNA and Impact Wrestling. See on Impact Wrestling. Hold on, to, um, hold on a second. Yeah, the first blood match, the four on four first blood match. It was um. Austin Air. Yeah, it was a four on four first blood match. Austin Aries and Bully Ray, Eric Young and Samoa Joe defeating Bobby Lashley, Ethan Carter, Third King King, and MVP in, in the eight man tag team first blood, eight man first blood tag team match, first blood match. And we see uh, in, um, in, uh, over on, on NX, WWE NXT, we see Tyler Breeze um, promoting um, his um, music video debut. And we see. Bailey, Rashad defeating Bailey, and we also see and we 
we see Aaron Neville defeating Justin Gabriel. And that about wraps it. So subscribe to me. Um, hope all you enjoy my real review. Subscribe to me, Godfather Soldier Some Swimming. Before I close out um this midnight with something um close out minutes midnight and oh I'm close out something with all of you. I'm gonna close out this show, the, the, my um review with this little incident that occurred at, at um WWE Rebellion, it's then called World Wrestling Federation, at WWE Rebellion in 1999, where where Vince where British Bulldog David Boy Smith breaks in, breaks in, um, um barges in without knocking. Takes anger out on Vince McMahon for not giving him a title shot in his own country in England. And, uh, and Rebellion in 99 took place in England, his own country, not giving him, titles, giving him a, a title shot against um, his home country, England, against Triple H. Then he loses his temper and he throws a trash can at Stephanie McMahon by accident, which causes her to be hospitalized. And Vince McMahon shouts, Get him back! Get me a man! Get me! Yeah, um, let me find that. Close out the show. Okay, here it is. Close out the show. British Bulldog throwing a trash can and stepping in man's face from from WWE Rebellion. UK 1999. Here's a close out show. Listen. Mentioned it um, about the AW Forbidden Door 2004. Is this gonna be any good? AW Forbidden Bo Door? Is this gonna be any good? I think this is gonna be turn out very terrible. Just like AW Dynamite was turning out terrible last night. That's all I'll do for all of you. Um, subscribe to God for so just was I hope all of you enjoyed my little review video. And um hope all of you have a good midnight. I'm out of here. Peace.